Hi guys, it's a physics emergency. Not really, well, kinda, kinda actually. On July 12th, the James Webb Space Telescope released its first scientific images, marking what many nerds, physicists, scientists, describe as the beginning of a new era in astronomy. If you've seen the pictures, um, you'll know that they're pretty cool. They're sort of objectively quite interesting photos to look at. But if you're someone who doesn't have a science background or isn't super into science, you might be wondering, okay, cool, so what? And even looking into some of the questions that the telescope says it's answering, again, it feels very cool, but why should this really matter to me? And I think with the knowledge that the telescope took 10 billion dollars and many decades to develop, those questions just become even more pressing. In this video, I'm going to introduce the telescope and some of the questions that the scientists are asking. But more than that, I'm going to look at why the telescope should matter to everyone, not just nerds <laughs> in the nicest way possible, like nerds in a positive, sense. Why do we explore space? What has space exploration brought us thus far in terms of innovation and technologies that we use down here on Earth? And what space exploration can mean to you as a person, even if you have absolutely no interest in redshift and the expanding universe? Hello, welcome to Brain Noises. I am Chloe, a science communicator and recovering physicist. And on this channel, we talk about the thoughts that pass through my mind, generally relating to science, but I can't make any promises. So if you think you might enjoy that, then please subscribe, like, comment if you have any questions or observations. Thanks for watching. First, we're gonna break down some of the nerdy questions. Now, what you need to understand is that the universe is always expanding and it's incredibly large. And it's for this reason that with a telescope, the further away you can see, the further into the past you're looking. And this is because the size of the universe means that light takes a tangible amount of time to reach us. So anything we're seeing here on Earth, we're only seeing because light started its journey many, many years ago and is finally reaching us. I think that's something that anyone can appreciate. It completely boggles my mind and I can't stop thinking about it. So many people describe telescopes, incredibly powerful telescopes, as sort of time machines. So a big part of these kind of operations is looking far away, but by proxy, looking into the past. People describe the Hubble telescope, James Webb's predecessor, as looking at galaxies in their toddler stages. Whereas galaxies that are being looked at by the James Webb are baby galaxies. So very, very young and created relatively soon after the Big Bang. I think although this is still a nerdy aspect, it's something that can definitely be appreciated by everyone. And I think it's one of those things where you don't really need to fret because if it boggles your mind, it boggles the minds of many scientists as well. It's one of those facts I think that as normal humans, it's really hard to properly get over that concept. So as I mentioned, the Hubble came before the James Webb. Because of its crazy angular resolution and enormous mirror, you may have seen a few clips floating around on the internet, the James Webb is capable of seeing incredibly far away things. It also has a very powerful infrared spectrograph, which allows us to see what galaxies are made up of, just in terms of molecules. And it's for these reasons that we talk about the James Webb as being the tool that may reveal many of the unanswered questions, the big unanswered questions that we have about the universe. There are seven main ones, and I'm going to quickly go through them. Where and when did the first stars form? What are the origins of supermassive black holes? Is dark matter cold? How do massive stars go supernova? Where do planets like Earth get their water? Could the most promising exoplanets harbour life? And does the rate of expansion of the universe bust our best cosmological model? Some of these questions seem 
obviously relevant and I think some it's a lot less obvious. And no matter how big these questions are, I think it still can feel a little bit sus that we're spending all of this money on space. So the first element I'd like to talk about is that telescopes and space exploration in general, but I'm gonna specifically talk about telescopes, are really important for innovation. So similar to how war accelerates innovation because you've got two sides competing, the space race, which started quite a while ago now but hasn't really stopped, has been a huge accelerant for innovation. Without space programs, we wouldn't have GPS, accurate weather prediction, solar cells, or the UV filters in sunglasses and cameras. So many of these things you'll recognize as stuff that you use day to day. There's also loads of medical research, especially relating to longevity, that could cure diseases and prolong human lives and these experiments just couldn't be done on Earth. So space exploration and a lot of the stuff that we find out through it could actually save lives. It's getting a lot of flack at the moment because it's a lot worse <laughs> than the James Webb, but I think it's really important to reflect on some of the stuff that Hubble brought us. So to investigate the universe's mysteries, Hubble required really, really sensitive CCDs. These basically convert digital light into images, so you can, it's fairly easy to work out why they're important in a telescope. But this technology is now used on Earth today, helping us detect breast cancer more efficiently, more clearly and more comfortably than ever before. And it also allows doctors to locate and take detailed x-ray images of dodgy looking tissue and then guide a needle to retrieve a sample. This procedure requires local rather than general anesthesia and the needle instead of a scalpel saves patients time, pain, scarring, radiation exposure and money. So it was actually a huge breakthrough in this area. CCDs have also been used to help read deteriorated sections of 2000 year old Dead Sea Scrolls. Some of the black ink on the scroll fragments could not be distinguished from the age darkened parchment. However, CCDs equipped with a tunable filter could image the fragments in longer infrared wavelengths that increased the contrast between the ink and the parchment. Computer image enhancement techniques revealed previously ineligible text, including a string of Hebrew letters that translate to, he wrote the words of Noah. The reason why telescopes are so good at this is because when they're trying to look at planets, planets will be existing right next to a really bright star. Stars obviously emit a lot of light. Planets not so much. People liken it to trying to see a moth flickering by a street lamp. I don't know why I'm pointing over there on a really dark night. So the incredible brightness of the street lamp makes it really, really hard to see anything nearby. And you can kind of imagine how this then like translates to the technologies I've just mentioned. Another innovation that Hubble brought us was to track endangered whale sharks. So marine biologists photograph patterns of white spots on a shark's skin, which are unique to whale sharks, as fingerprints are to humans. But examining and matching the photographs by eye is tedious and time consuming. So a software programmer teamed up with NASA astronomer to take the star matching algorithm that they developed for Hubble and modified it to recognize these spots on sharks. There are actually a lot more innovations that you can find on NASA's website. This is where I found these ones. I just picked out a few of my favorites and I'd recommend giving that a read because it's incredibly cool. The next reason why regular folks should care about these telescopes is because of asteroids, something that feels like a far off issue but is in fact Kind of not, kind of is, kind of isn't. Although these days the solar system is a lot calmer than it was before, there is still a chance that an enormous asteroid might come and crush us into oblivion. Without telescopes, we sort of wouldn't really know what was out there. Telescopes can be used to help us detect an asteroid and work out how fast it's going in what direction and answer the question, will it hit us? And a space program is needed to work out how on Earth you'd deflect one of these asteroids. Without it, Earth has a set in stone death date, I guess. So this next one was a little bit sad to read about because it feels a little bit single waste planet vibes, but essentially a big part of space exploration is seeing what other planets are inhabitable, what other planets are out there. I know that this speaks to a few of the questions we actually described as nerdy ones. So what other planets have water, where it comes from, and just any other planets that exist that we could just go live on in case everything goes to 
I think what first sprung to my mind was climate change, but there are a few other reasons why we might want to colonise other planets, and asteroids is one of them. In a similar vein, there are already a lot of people looking at mining space, so Astroforge is a startup that wants to mine asteroids instead of Earth, which would mean an effectively unlimited supply of raw materials that are actually quite rare on Earth. So as the deputy project manager of the James Webb Space Telescope showed off one of the images, she said, I can't help but think about scale. You know, every light we see here is an individual star, not unlike our sun, and many of these likely also have planets. It just reminds me that our sun and our planets, and ultimately us, were formed out out of the same kind of stuff that we see here. We humans really are connected to the universe. We're made of the same stuff that is in this beautiful landscape. I enjoyed this statement because it's so true. Although it's cheesy, we are made of the same things that stars are made of. The elements that exist within us could not exist without the life cycle of stars. But I think more than that, she is touching on how insignificant we are in a comforting way. We're just one of the many things that make up this enormous place that we live. And that's a part of why I love physics and astronomy, because it sort of tells you that you're irrelevant in the best way possible. And it also reminds you that there is so much that we don't know, and the things we think we know, we kind of don't even know for sure. Images like this and physics as a whole really helps remind me to keep an open mind, because who knows? Like, seriously, who knows? Another reason that, that I've never really thought about personally, but I found in my research was a cheesy one, but we're gonna end on it because that's just, we're cheesy here at Brain Noises HQ. And that is that humans are innate explorers. We want to know what's out there. We want the answers to the questions why. We've always wanted to know more. And many say that if we stop exploring, we stop being human. So that's all I have to say currently on the James Webb. Physics can be a tough ride, but it's images like that that kind of reminds me why I chose to do it. And I'm really excited to see what else comes of the telescope. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Subscribe if you so wish. I will see you in the next one.